So this is the example we're gonna uh, we're gonna be looking at x cubed plus four x squared minus ten equals zero. That's our function, and we are going to be looking for the particular root that's in the interval one to two. As the method suggests, let's quickly get into it. F of one is going to be one plus four minus ten equals minus five, and f of two equals 2 to the 4, 4 to the 8, plus 2 to the 4, 4 is 16, minus 10, so that's equal to 14. So we clearly see a change of sign. That means there is, we have, we can verify that there is in fact a root between 1 and 2. So the way we proceed uh, is to calculate our first uh, guess at the root. Let the, the root is going to be, according to our method, it's going to be, We'll call it R, and we'll call it R1. Our first guess at the root is the midpoint of 1 and 2. And the way we calculate it, remember, this is the formula we said, A plus B minus A over 2. So A is 1 plus, I know you can guess the, the midpoint of 1, the, the, the point between 1 and 2 is in fact um, 1.5, uh, but let's see if the method actually gives us, and you'll see it does. Uh, 2 minus 1 over 2, so it's equal to 1.5. So our R1, our first guess at the root is 1.5. Now, what is f of 1.5? Let's check it. 2.375, just trust that it's correct. So that's our uh, value of the root. 2.375 is clearly not 0, so that means it's not our root. Um, now, it means uh, if that's f, uh, of 1.5 the midpoint remember our new intervals there's two intervals now 1 to 1.5 or the root is 1.5 to 2 it's in one of these two so since f of 1.5 is 2.375 and uh, the, ch the negative sign is f of 1 that means our uh, this interval the root is between these two values clearly because f of 2 is positive. So that means that what we'll now do is look at the midpoint of 1 and 1.5. And so therefore, r2 is in fact uh, going to be 1 plus um, uh, 0.5 divided by 2. So it's equal to 1.25. So that's our new, uh, that's our r2, our second attempt at the root. And again, we will do the same thing, which is we'll calculate f of 1.25. Uh, f of 1.25 is going to be uh, minus, minus 1.79687, 7, uh, We are assuming a decimal accuracy of about, uh, for now, let's say about five digits. Um, but that actually works out to be exact in this case. Uh, there's no infinite decimals. It's very, it, that's the exact value. So 1.25 is minus 1.79687. Now, when you're doing any calculations, as long as uh, your calculator or the computer doesn't give you infinite decimals, which it won't, it's always going to be finite stuff. But what I'm saying is, as long as it's a finite number of decimal points, please use all the decimal points possible. Uh, get into the habit of doing that, but in reality, in practicality, of course, there will always be um, five decimal points of accuracy or six or seven or whatever. Usually questions define those. But anyway, let's, uh, so here in this case, this is the exact value, minus 1.79687. Now, interestingly, that's negative. Remember, um, it's uh, our new interval now, there are two intervals to look at, which is one to 1.25 and 1.25 to 1.5. Now clearly, f of 1, remember, don't keep it in mind, here it is, it's minus 5. Now if it's negative and we take the product of f1 and f1.25, that's going to give us a positive value, which means according to our algorithm, according to our algorithm, that uh, is not in fact, where the root now is. So the root is here. It means it's between 1.25 and 1.5. So we'll take the midpoint of that, and in this way we will continue. Um, if you continue this way about 13 iterations down the road, you'll find that the value turns out to be, in other words, the 13th iteration. So R13 
in other words, R13. So dot dot dot. So as we go further, we'll get a value of minus 0 0.00194. So that would be, uh, sorry, sorry, that's not the root, that's f of R13. f of R13 will turn out to be this. Now remember, what's our objective? Our objective is, ideally, we want f of Rn to be 0. But in this case, it's minus 0 0.00194. It's not the negative sign. It has no relevance here. It's not important. It's the size of the value. The smaller this value is, the closer it is to the answer. Now, here's where the tolerance part becomes important. Now, you have to decide where are you gonna st when are you going to stop searching. Practically, getting to zero might not be something that may happen. So one must decide on a tolerance. Otherwise, you could be searching forever. So, in order to do that, you may say, okay, I'm going to stop when my tolerance is less than 0 0.00001, which means you will keep searching, so you might end up going to R50 or 40 or whatever, and, um, and when this tolerance is achieved, when, the, when F, of the val F of Rn, whatever that might be, or Rk, is less than this, uh, less than your tolerance, you'll stop searching and you'll be happy with that route. But it's not going to be the exact route, it's going to be the approximate root. Now R13, because I already know what it is, I've, I mean I've calculated it, is 1.365 in fact and 112305 in fact. Okay, so um, you could, I mean, uh, let me let me just give you that for completion in case you're looking for it. So R13 here we are assuming is 1.36511205. Oh now, of course, um, uh, the bisection method and all of, uh, can easily be implemented um, on, of all things on Excel, in fact, and I urge you to uh, try, in fact, to do that. Um, I'll show you an example um, uh, in another video, uh, by, done by another colleague, uh, because it's, they've done a good job, and I'm just going to refer you to that video, and I'll put it in the playlist. Thank you very much uh, for your attention.